In our last video, we took a look at some of the ways that you can use a single light in your video work, with a little analysis on the way natural light works, and how we can recreate this with a single lighting unit, as opposed to just sticking a light there because it looks cool. So let's continue through and analyse our other clips. For our fourth setup, we once again used a combination of natural daylight and our single lighting unit, this time utilising the fading light from the sky after the sun had set. By using our single light, gelled with a full CTO gel, to represent the late afternoon sun, just after the actual sun has set. We're effectively replacing the recently set sun and bringing up our own artificial sun to stand in for it, while still making use of the ambient skylight. This makes for a more realistic representation of the sun and skylight together. We needed to work within the space constraints we had but we wanted our sunset light to be coming in at some sort of angle so it didn't flatten out the image. So to get the angle we wanted, we needed to put the light in relatively close to the area we were capturing on camera. We also added a DIY Kukaloris, or cookie, in front of our light to break it up a little and provide us with some shadow patterns, placing it in such a way to make this previously bright wall a little less flat, and to just make the image more interesting and less harsh than just a straight hard light would have been. You can see how the ambient from our fading skylight is filling in our shadows. And these shadows are a much cooler colour temperature than our sunlight, helping to sell the fact that the sun is still in the sky rather than our own light. Now in reality, the sun is extremely far away, whereas our light is extremely close, lighting only a small area. One thing that helped us to hide this fact was to frame the shot only in the area where the light is hitting. By choosing this small area against a wall, rather than having a deep background, we knew our light could cover the whole area of the frame. As you can't see anything outside of the frame, your brain is just going to assume everything out there is lit the same way. Another thing that helped to make our light more realistic was the Kukaloris. You can just about see that we've got more exposure on this wall, as opposed to the back wall, where it's a little darker. This is because our light is in close so it's falling off a bit quicker. The sun wouldn't do this, as it's so far away, it will be lighting everything evenly. Where the Kukaloris is relatively close to our light, with our light being a large source compared to it, some of our shadows are quite soft and subtle, which is helping us to hide these changes in exposure better. But because the Kukaloris is so close, giving us these softer shadows, it's also mixing with the harder shadows from the objects and our subject that are in the scene. You would think that because the sun is so far away, all of our shadows should be the same kind of quality, so all hard or all soft. But we do actually get this mix between soft and hard shadows in reality with real sunlight. Depending on how much light is being blocked by the object, or how far away the object is from the surface that it's casting a shadow on. You'll notice this if you make a shadow on the surface under the sun, then move away from that surface. The shadow will go from hard to soft relative to your distance.
so our image does make sense, as the objects our Kukulorus is representing are further away than the subject and the other objects in the scene, which are casting the harder shadows. The only real giveaway here would be the length of our shadows. When the sun is as low as our light is, it's still so so far away from us that the shadows would be longer. But because our light isn't so close, the shadows aren't being cast quite as far. By choosing to have our frame quite tight, we've made this much less obvious. But if we had a little more space, it would have been better to have our light a bit further back from the scene. These sorts of things are always something to think about. On a budget, with spatial constraints, shooting with a single light, or otherwise. Because it helps you to gain a better understanding of the way natural light works. For the close-up, we just removed the Kukulorus and went for a hard upstage key with our Godox, acting as the sunset light. You can see how our ambient skylight is filling in the shadows on the other side of the face. The contrasting colour temperatures make it for a more realistic representation of the sunset. Now using fading daylight for this sort of thing is a tough one. You're going to struggle to get many shots when the light is quickly getting darker and the temperature is getting cooler. A more suitable way to use this technique would be to shoot with a powerful light during the day, when the ambient light isn't changing quite so much. But if you're on a budget and can't afford a more powerful light, this sort of thing can be a lifesaver if you only need a few shots and you plan it well. Not to mention, it's just good practice and a great way to learn about light in general. Just a quick leeway to remind you that you can grab my 21 minute colour grading tutorial from my website, detailing the process of grading two cinematic looks in DaVinci Resolve for just £8 along with free practice DNG files, so you can grade along with the video. And if you're looking at selling your own digital products, or even just looking at building a website, check out Zyro. With an e-commerce plan, you can upload and sell digital products up to 25 gigabytes in size, and manage your Facebook, Instagram, or Amazon stores all in one place. Online commerce has been an especially important element to my own income for the past year as a freelance video creator, as I'm sure it has been for many freelancers and small businesses, and Zyro has been very easy to work with, allowing me to make a fully customizable site and store using an easy and intuitive drag and drop system, without having to know anything complicated about website building. Websites made with Zyro are also fast loading, which can help to increase your search engine optimization and have your page rank higher on search engines. If you're looking at building a site or store, and you'd also like to support my channel, click on the link in the video description or use the code ROBELLIS, and you can get up to 89% off with my deal on Zyro's one year, two year, and four year premium plans along with a free domain for a year. Our fifth setup was relatively simple. 
we used our godox boomed above the table, into a beauty dish, with a grid to control the light spill. to fall directly onto the table. We also used a white sheet under the grid to soften up the light a little. I would like to make a separate video on the beauty dish, as I think it's a really useful modifier with a pretty specific look, but I've not really seen anyone touch on this for video work. So I won't go into the characteristics of the light from a beauty dish for now. But essentially, we're using the beauty dish to create a splash of light on the table and paper, acting as a bounce to light the face, and representing the light from some sort of ceiling lamp. The beauty dish is very much shaped like a domed ceiling lamp, but with a more pleasing quality of light. It would have been nice to use a smaller dish but we used what we had to hand. We tilted the dish a little toward the subject, which provided light for his hair, and some little touches of light to his face, which you can see better when he answers the phone. We didn't have the space or resources to actually show a ceiling lamp hanging above the table in our shot, and as our key is coming from above and bouncing from the table, we decided to place a practical lamp in the background, high up. And while we're not necessarily trying to imply that the light shining down and bouncing from the table is coming from the lamp, it still works in harmony with what's happening with the light in the scene, which ties our image together nicely. Applying gel to a beauty dish of this size can be a bit of a challenge, so instead we opted to use a cheaper Wi-Fi bulb in the practical lamp, which allowed us to dim the power to better balance it to the scene, and change the colour to a rough daylight temperature to match our Godox. Using one light in your work can pose some challenges. But it can also work as a very simple solution to lighting your scene. More importantly, it's a great way to learn about how light in the real world works. How you can make the most out of what you have. and furthering your understanding of light, and how you can use it in a realistic way. I use Artlist for music in my YouTube videos, and Artgrid for stock footage. You can find links in the description and comments to get an extra two months free when you sign up for either Artlist or Artgrid. Grab my 21 minute color grading tutorial at robellisscinematography.com forward slash downloads for just £8. You can now support me on Patreon at Rob Ellis Cinematography and get up to 89% on yearly plans for your website with my Zyro deal using the link in the description or by using the code Rob Ellis.